I, last winter across the U.S. was a lot of weather whiplash. I mean, I know here in in Boston we had like quite you know quite a few days that were there was a forty degree forty degrees you know swing in temperature in in one day a diurnal swing of forty and many more of thirty degree temperature. You know, so um, last year there was a, a lot of this, uh, and I feel like that's what's you know certainly in the U.S. Uh, we've been seeing more of these kind of weather whiplash events where we you know swing from extreme cold to extreme heat or and vice versa. We're we're seeing these midwinter uh, cold air intrusions, uh, such as caused the the Texas uh, debacle in twenty twenty one. Is that something that comes to mind? Yeah, yeah, no, so absolutely, uh, yeah. So December is is certainly been warming. If you look at the U.S., so, you know, so the the reliable uh, observations are you know are considered since nineteen seventy nine. And if you look at like the temperature trends, so December is you know is mostly warming across the U.S. And actually February, going back to 1979, so quite a few years now, we're actually seeing in the in the center of the U.S. Uh, a very distinctive cooling trend. Uh, and, and so I had I had a paper on the 2021 you know cold wave Texas cold wave and try to argue that it was had you know that Arctic change is causing more kind of these disruptions. To the polar vortex, so we tend to get more severe winter weather when the polar vortex is weak, and more milder rainy weather when the polar vortex is strong. And we've seen a decrease in the strong state of the polar vortex and an increase in the weak state of the polar vortex. And again, I you know our arguments attributed to Arctic change, but one really a kind of focus area for these disruptions of the polar vortex is the is the U.S. east of the Rockies. And, you know, so that's why we try to explain, you know, I, I think it's quite surprising, you know, and people say, well, you know, winters aren't, you know, they're getting warmer. And, and, and when you look over a whole, you know, certainly across the globe or the whole Northern Hemisphere as a whole, but I mean, you know, to get a, what is it, since 1979 is, uh, you know, how many, to, you know, 42, 43 years now, we've seen a cooling trend in the month of February. I think it's quite remarkable. Again, a lot of people say, well, that's just, you know, you know, that's just random and by chance and you, know, you can get, but it's hard to get with such strong radiative force and <laughs> cooling trend for that long of a period. Yeah. I, yeah. I talked to, that's very striking because uh, I, and you are the second person who has like put a finger on that. I talked to Martha Shulsky, who is the state climatologist for Nebraska. Right. And she was the first person that I talked to that specifically said, you know, over the winters, you know, we see winter as a whole warming, but there's a slot there in, in like February and, and this area in, you know, the middle of the country, Nebraska, Kansas, you know, yeah, yeah. down to Texas, where she said, we're seeing like a cooling trend in, in that, you know, mid to late February time slot over recent decades. For Nebraska, in looking at our recent trends um, during winter, one thing that we have seen is that we're warming during the early winter and then really cooling down in the last 30 years during February. We have a tendency to be getting more um, Arctic air, more polar um, air outbreaks for this part of the country during February, during late winter. And there's a lot of research going on in this area, but what it seems to be linked to is those strong changes that we're seeing in the Arctic, loss of sea ice for certain regions of the Arctic, that's resulting in the wavy jet stream pattern and more of these polar air outbreaks. And, and we saw that in February of 2021, where much of the Great Plains were significantly colder than normal. And we saw some serious implications for that, rolling blackouts and power outages and so forth. Right, yeah, so. I, that's, that's so striking. Yes, yeah, I think it's very striking. I, I mean, I just, I'm, you know, again, uh, people will take the argument, well, you know, it's just by chance and so, but uh, you know, that's a long time. <laughs> again, when the forcing, you know, uh, uh, you know, if, um, you know, you know, a rock wants to go downhill, and if the rock is going uphill, <laughs> I mean, obviously, people argue yeah. not arguing. Yeah, but I'm saying, but you know, it's almost you know, in a way, <laughs> it's like it that's kind right. of defies logic, and um, so, that's right. And, and again, we've so we've documented that there's been this 
uh, increasing in these disruptions of the polar vortex, especially the kind of the, the flavor or the state of the polar vortex that really fa really focuses the cold across central North America, you know, so central Canada, central U.S., even into the eastern U.S. Uh, you know, that's they've been increasing. And